Hey, what's up, YouTube? So before I had my Mazda Miata, um, I wasn't necessarily in the market. I just wanted to, to test drive the car, and I actually went into a dealership two times, and I kind of got rejected. They didn't let me test drive the car at the time, or it was kind of late. And the, the third time I went in, I actually test drove a, a RF, and I think it was... I'm not sure if it was a Grand Touring or a Sport, but when I drove it, I, I liked it, but I, I wasn't super, super impressed at the time. And when I was at the dealership, I, I was just messing around. I wasn't planning on buying a car, and I just wanted to negotiate the lowest price. And previous to me buying this car, I had a 2017 um, Toyota Prius. <laughs> And that, that car got pretty good gas mileage, and, and it handled pretty good for what it was. But I'm, I was looking for a, for a different kind of car. And, and my other cars that I had before that was I, I had a 2009 Mazda Speed 3. I had a couple 93 RX-7s, um, 2005 Mazda 3. That's a good car, too. And before that, I had Hondas. I had a... A 97 Honda Accord, and then I had a 2001 uh, Honda Prelude SH, and and I sold that when I moved to California. It was kind of sad I, during that time. I graduated in 2009 during a market crash. Couldn't get a job anywhere, so I had to dump that car, and I, I sold I sold it in New York where I'm from, and then I moved to the Bay Area, California. But when when, when I was in a dealership, I was talking to uh, to Alfred at uh, Stevens Creek. Nice guy. If you guys ever go down there, um, chat them up. So, they they, they actually had a two, 2018 uh, Mazda Miata Clubs, black, with uh, the cherry top, and they were the same. They had two of the same kinds of cars. And they actually had the 2019 RF hardtops at the time, but I knew I wasn't in a market for those. So at, at that time in 2018, since the 2019s were coming out, they dropped the price on the ND1s. The, the new versions were called the ND2s because they had a better engine. And I actually wanted the 2019 and I was going to wait. But at, at the time, um, they were given $4,000 off. And then they negotiated it down to five. I honestly didn't want the car because I was set on 2019. But... Uh, he had the general, the general manager come over, and he said, "Oh, you know, I'll give you six thousand off." And um, I, I still didn't want it, but then he, he dropped it all the way down to uh, six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. And I just said at the time, make it seven even, and then I'll sign. And the the main reason why I did that was because the the upgraded engine. It's not necessarily worth you know paying the sticker price on it because that, at that time for a club probably cost like 36 37,000 this car is not worth that amount in my opinion and to to get my car for uh for 30,000 out the door um I, I thought it was a good deal and and in order for me to get that deal he wanted me to finance it because i actually wanted to pay out right but he said, in order for me to give you this deal, uh, we have to finance it. And um, everything came out to under 30, which is what I wanted. I, I think they tacked on a, a finance fee. It was like 150 bucks. And and actually, when I, when I got my, my first payment, uh, I, I actually paid everything off. I, I couldn't pay it off in one, one payment, but I actually had to make... I think it was like 12 different payments and it was off by one cent each and and, and I actually got my title within I, I think a month or two well when I was at the dealership I, I told them that I, I was gonna go get my title for my Prius at home but they, they didn't want me to leave at that time because maybe, maybe they thought that they were gonna lose me and I, everything went through we, we signed the paperwork and on when I went to the closer he kept on trying to get me to buy this maintenance or the the warranties, all, all the shit that's a waste of money in my opinion. Because I, I actually told him that I was going to do work on my car to, to save money. And 
And in my opinion, the Mazda Miata, for the most part, is a pretty is a pretty reliable car. It's a basic car. It doesn't have a CVT. It doesn't have a, a lot of electronics on it, and that, that's why I opted out. And and I was hoping that this car got a good transmission compared to the the 2016s and 17s. I was hoping that they ironed out the problems. And and at the time when I, when I bought my car, I, I bought a club. Because I, I wanted the top of the line car at the time for performance. I don't care about luxury. I'm, I only care about the driving experience. And and I wasn't going to mod the car at the time. But I think things change. And, and the first thing I did when, when I got the car back was uh, I plastic dip all of the emblems. That, that, the same day. When, when, when I first got the car home, I, I noticed that there was a, a small gash in the door. It's pretty uh, pretty minor. And, and I actually brought it back and uh, I, I just told them, oh, you know, if you just give me uh, some touch up paint and then I'll touch it on myself because I, I was happy with the price. And, and and in my opinion, it's like, no, no car is going to stay perfect and, and I don't expect it to. And, and uh, a, a month later, I, I went to uh, Mr. Tun in San Jose and, and I had them put on a partial clear bra to try and protect the paint because a lot of... Uh, a lot of users they complain about chips and and, and I know that that would be a, a papi for me, so I, I went ahead and got that done and I actually I, I had a bubble in it. It started to bubble up and then I, I brought it back, and then the guy was like, "Oh, you know, we could uh, we 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 could redo it for you." And then I, I personally didn't care. I, I mean, I didn't want them to redo it because I knew it was gonna take time and on. You you risk another bubble, but then they just lifted it up and then they set it back down. And, and there's a little mark there, and, and I'm okay with that because, uh, like I said before, I, I don't expect this car to to stay perfect. If, if you talk to a lot of people, they they want to keep that car low mile because they think that they want to sell it. But it's like I, I bought this car to drive, and the the amount of miles I, I drove this car cross country, and then I drove it up north to Alaska. And my 2018, I, I bought it in August. Um, and, and I currently have close to uh, 45,000 miles on it. So I, I bought it in August 2018. Uh, my first year, I, I put 30,000 miles on it. And, and this car is just super fun. It's like a go-kart. It, it doesn't have a lot of power initially. And a, a lot of reviewers, they complain about the suspension not being good enough, the stock suspension, but in, in my opinion, it, it was good enough. I mean, it, it wasn't, it's not like having, you know, aftermarket springs, but it, it's good enough for for daily driving. So I actually just test drove a, a Model 3, the, the basic version, and, and I actually like it because for, for what it is, it's not a Miata, obviously, and and it, hand, it handles like a really, really good car. The suspension's good. The delivery is good. The power. The interior is good. The simplicity of it. It's like you could just use your phone as a key. Versus like having to, my, my Miata, you got to turn it on and off. Tesla, you don't. You just get in it and you, you drive it. Put it in a park and then you get out. And I, I like the, the software. The software in that car. And, and the autopilot too. The autopilot's cool. And and at that time, I, I kind of dismissed it because I I wasn't uh I wasn't sold on charging your car. And if, if you go back ten years ago, I I, I was against hybrids because I was like, yeah, why well, why would you buy a hybrid when you could just buy a small four cylinder engine and drive it? And 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 I think uh, if if you bought like a hybrid and a small four cylinder car and then you average it out after five years probably the same but it's the advantages that you get when you buy these cars so just say for example if you bought a prius you probably be pumping gas you know tw twice or one, once every two weeks you, you probably wouldn't even be doing it every week but in my miata i have to do it every week pretty much because my range is low the, the stock range was, uh, I was getting about 330, 350 unmodified. And then when I modified it, <laughs> I was probably getting uh, 
220, I would say 220, 240. And my gas mileage went from uh, 35, and, and I, I drove it for real, like spirit to driving. It went from 35 down to about 20, 22, 24. So. But that, that Prius, I, I actually drove it from uh, Bay Area to, uh, to Las Vegas, and, and I didn't have to pump at all. My, my max mileage on that car was uh, 626, and I'm pretty sure I kept, kept on going for uh, another 50 miles if I wanted to. So that car is good for close to 700 miles, which is pretty impressive. I think the gas tank is about 10 or 11. My, my Miata is about, I think it's 10, 10 or 11. And that, that Prius is getting, uh, you know, more than double the gas mileage. And for, for maintenance for that car, it's, uh, you, you honestly don't have to do anything. The, the first two years, the, the oil interval change was 10,000. Uh, Toyota covered it. So the, the first two oil changes were free. And do, do I regret buying my Miata over my Prius? No, I, I think the, I probably should have bought the Miata before I bought a Prius. But at that time, my company was laying people off and... I wanted that car just in case I had to live in it, and that that car would be decent to live in. Um, I see a lot of YouTubers living in a Teslas, and and it would be interesting. I mean, if if you could charge the car with convenience, and I, I think it would be a good deal, because uh, I I would say my my next car, and, and I don't plan on selling my Miata, but my my next car, I'm, I want it to be a Tesla. I'm not sure if I would get a Model 3 or the Model Y because I always like hatchbacks because they're pretty versatile versus uh, having a regular car. I always said that if you had the choice between a hatchback or a, or a sedan, you, you, you're better off getting a hatchback because you could put a lot of stuff in it. So uh, one thing I need to figure out is uh, Tesla, they have a mid-range and... It's a dual motor, and then they have the performance. And I'm curious. I'm curious if the motors are the same. Because if they're the same, and the only difference is, like, suspension, brakes, aesthetics, wheels, then there's no point to get a performance because, well, like I said in one of my other videos, if you buy a car, you're better off building it on your own because the performance parts that you're going to get on a factory car they're not going to be as good as a uh, aftermarket, in my opinion. For example, for for that Tesla, I'm, I, I was talking to the owner of Saki Bomb, and then he said that he had he actually had a mid-range um, Tesla Model Three, and, and he said that uh, he he bought the upgrade to to make it a second faster, and then he was doing R and D on it for like the suspension, the brakes, the wheels, all of that stuff. So I'm I'm pretty sure if. Uh, if, if you bought that car and, and you modified it, it would be way better, in, in my opinion. So so do do I regret buying my car? Because if, if you look at the total cost, it was a uh, thirty for. It was about thirty for the car, and then I dumped a good amount of money into this car when I modified it. So technically, looking back, I, I could have just bought a mid-range Tesla, and I, I think that. If, if, if the Miata didn't exist or, or other cars that are similar to that, then I probably would have looked into it, but it, it's a trade-off. It, it's kind of like uh, advanced technology, you know, over over driving experience and handling. And and, and I'm curious about the, the sports car Tesla that they're going to come out with because I'm pretty sure that that's going to be sick. Because it's going to have uh, good handling and it's going to have uh, power. But most people can't afford a quarter of a million dollar car. I'm, I'm curious if uh, if they came out with a cheaper version. And, and I'm also curious if... Because uh, uh, the original Tesla Roadster, it was based off of... I think it was uh, another car at least. And, and I was curious if... Uh, I, I saw an article on Tesla wanting to implement the technology into like a Subaru or a Mazda. So I'm curious if, if you put Tesla tech into a Miata, 
I, I wonder how it would handle. I wonder how people will like it. So going going back to the stock car, I, I didn't want to modify it initially because I, I knew it was a, it was expensive to do. Because I actually dumped a lot of money into my Mazda Speed Three, and that that car is pretty fun. I, I miss it a lot. I'm, I kind of regret selling that car too, because I I think that I, I could have drove it for another four years if, if I was smart about it. But my modif modifying cars and and uh, tinkering with them, it, it's pretty fun. It's a it's a hobby and it's an expensive hobby. So the, during the coronavirus thing, it's uh it's past two weeks, and I would say for the first two weeks, I was pretty lazy. I was lazy from a physical standpoint because I'm, I haven't been working out for for that time, and two weeks prior to that, I, I didn't really work out. I wasn't really dedicated. But I, I think that I was more focused on trying to learn about finance because we're in a downturn and I'm, I'm trying to learn about how to invest during this time because it, it's like a once in a, a 10 year event. And, and also I, I was trying to catch up on things that I wanted to do like uh, learn about nutrition or, or learn about cooking. I, I was actually trying to read uh, finance books as well. And I, I personally don't like reading. I think that uh, if, if they had audiobooks, and, and I did download a lot of finance audiobooks on YouTube, you could go to, uh, if you have a Mac, there's an application called Clip Grabber. Pretty much you take the URL and then you you drag it in and um, it, it could download the video, it could download uh, MP4, and then you just listen to it. I, I think that I'm not patient as a person, and that could be due to my hyperthyroid. Because when, whenever I read a book, I, I kind of get bored because I, I can only process the, the information so fast versus if I'm listening to YouTube, I could turn it on like two, two speed, two times the speed to make it quicker. And, and it's just more enjoyable. I, I think that I, I get a lot more out of it.